morning, good morning. Turn on the marquee lights, good morning, good morning tonight. Good morning, good morning. Broadway is feeling bright. Good morning, good morning tonight. When the theaters shut their doors, we were so sad and blue. Now we're bringing back Broadway in our Tuesday night review. So good morning, good morning. We'll make you feel all right. Good morning, good morning. Tonight, tonight, tonight for you. Good morning, good morning tonight. What a take. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, Michael. Hi, Jackie Cheers. Cox. Cheers. Cheers. I am, oh can goodness. finally announce my Biden Harris mug came in the mail. Oh my god, mine hasn't arrived yeah. yet. You must have. You mm. must be. You must be just much uh, a, a bigger supporter. I uh, I'm this, rocking this generic Washington D.C. Well, mug. It's, it's beautiful, but I have to tell you, the whiskey tastes even better when it's coming out of a Biden Harris 2020 mug. Um, and and the uh, white cloth still tastes uh, like trash. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning, Jackie Cox. Happy Tuesday night. Uh, uh, oh, we forgot the whole script. Hello, I'm Michael Hall. And I'm Jackie Cox. And welcome to Good, good morning, morning Tonight. tonight. Oh my goodness, it worked so well. Yeah, an extra special welcome to the people in the comments who were uh, checking if we forgot to do the broadcast today. Jackie, we were like five minutes late and the comments were blowing up with maybe they just forgot. Okay, and here's the thing. I think we keep saying this every week, but like this <laughs> week we are doing the most we are doing the most extra we have surprises uh in store for all of you uh and uh maybe some surprises for our guests that we had to you know finagle to make happen so we uh we, we you know we apologize but we wanted to ensure <laughs> that the quality caliber of this content and program would be um up to snuff uh, and, I, and, and I think it's gonna be what uh what an episode we have tonight you guys it is the kickoff of our very first annual I, I say annual I assume we're gonna do this every year because this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me uh, our very first <laughs> annual Oztoberfest Ooh, yes Ooh. Oztoberfest and um I, I, all of October as part of our shows here at Good Morning Tonight we'll be welcoming some of the iconic women who have played the role of Elphaba in Wicked oh, and what? speaking of iconic today's Wicked Cool guest is just about as iconic as they get uh, Jackie we're going to be hanging out with another Jackie Miss Jackie Burns I'm very excited to have another Jackie join the ranks mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. this television program. Um, also, speaking of Wicked, we'll be joined by Broadway's Daniel Quadrino, who of course appeared as Bach uh, and has also starred in Newsies, Bye Bye Birdie, and Peter Pan Live, just to name a few. Yes, and he's a Broadway Talk Live favorite. Uh, this is his second show of the Broadway Talk Live Network. I'm so excited to see him again. And speaking of people making their second appearance at Broadway Talk Live, another pair of boys that we just can't get enough of, uh, the hosts of the hit podcast, Drama. Ooh. Dylan and Connor McDowell are here. They have a big announcement for us. Uh, and I just, I can't wait to hear it. Also, tonight, if you're enjoying this show, we encourage you to make a donation to Broadway for Biden. Much like Michael's mug, we have to support uh, Joe Biden in whichever way we can, as Not we hope yet. for him to be our next president. And if you would like to join us, just go to tinyurl.com slash Biden if you're so inclined. If you're enjoying the show and if you enjoy uh, democracy, then you can help elect Joe Biden uh, and, and support us as well in the theater community by donating yeah. to Broadway for Biden. Yeah, just pretend we're doing this very, very fancy official uh, morning or nighttime show at your local gay bar. This is very uh, fancy, very it's, official. It's, it's a bar show. Uh, and if you would have thrown us a few dollars, instead of throwing them at us, uh, donate them to, to Joe Biden. We think that's about as good of a cause as you could possibly find mm. for the next month. Perfect. Ooh. All right, Jackie, we have so much to get into today. I am so, so excited. So uh, shall we jump into our first guest tonight? Yes, our first guest tonight starred on Broadway in Newsies, Wicked, and oh, Wicked. Okay, just a few and small shows. Newsies, Wicked. Those just those little ones. And bye bye, Birdie. You may also recognize him from NBC's Peter Pan Live, or as Mike TV from the national tour of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah, his wig in that show was almost as impressive as uh, your natural hairdo that you're wearing tonight. 
That's uh, what I thought you were going to say. Yes. Recently, he was in San Diego, appearing in the world premiere of the new musical Fly, uh, when COVID uh, forced the production to close. Now, you guys, you know that sometimes we ask our guests to perform live for us here on the show. Uh, but when this gentleman agreed to come on tonight, I knew exactly what I wanted to see. Uh, this is a performance uh, from his one-man show at Feinstein's 54 Below that I was obsessed with, and it never came out on YouTube. Uh, so, so when he agreed to come on the show, I wrote him and I said, listen, not only do I want you on the show, will you tell me how to get my hands on this video? Michael, are you telling me this is this is a scoop? This is, is a this, scoop. This is a scoop? This you is know we like a well, scoop. A scoop, a scoop means this. I didn't know we, that was going to be that long. That's we have very long. You guys, for anyone, uh, for anyone who's come to this show before and is uh, is a longtime fan of the show, uh, Jackie almost never presses any buttons. And I have to tell I you, don't. most of tonight's show has been run by Jackie so far. She's having a great time at the control board over there. Um, so thank, thank you for you the breaking me. news segment. I also didn't know that was going to be that long. I was like, oh, it's a 13-second breaking news. By the time the, the video <laughs> finishes, the news is over. The news is not even scooped by, uh, the news. by the New York Post. <laughs> <laughs> the news is just getting started, and here it is with a uh, exclusive, somewhat uh, performance that I've been looking forward to all night. Let's take a look at tonight's first guest. It's Daniel Quadrino. I close my eyes and I can see a world that's waiting for me that I call my Dark through the door, through where no one's been before, but it feels like and they can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. And they can say, they can say I've lost my mind. I don't care, I don't care if they call me crazy. Oh my God, so good. Hi, Danny Trino, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to be here. This is so fun. Well, good morning. God, why do we know so many talented Cheers. people? Good morning tonight. Cheers. Good morning tonight. I was so distracted. I didn't even have my mug ready to cheers you and say good morning tonight, which is my main goal on this. And then my next follow-up question, because this is hard hitting news. <laughs> Daniel Quadrino, what's in your mug? Um, according to you, trash, which is a white cloth. <laughs> Whoa! 
<laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Shots fired. Go oh my gosh. With a squirt of lemon in there too. Just like Ooh, some... <laughs> double it up on the up flavor. Yeah, double your flavor, double your fun. That's what I say. Speaking of double mint, we have twins later. Uh, so many exciting things <laughs> happening on this show. Now, Jackie Cox, how many Red Bulls did you have before this show? You are on fire tonight. I am on something. Uh, it could be. Uh, it could be whatever they, that green elixir. Hey, hey, have another drink, my dark eyed beauty. Um, Danny, that number was from your one man show that you did at Fine Science Fifty Four Below. I was there. Lucky me. Yes, you were. Uh, when was that? That was last year, two years ago. At this point, yeah, that was probably like a little over two years ago. Uh, right before I left for tour. Yeah, that song is so funny because my mom, when she saw like. Uh, Greatest Showman, whatever show that that's from, the movie. She was like, why didn't you audition for the little boy? And I was like, well, mom, I'm a little too old to be that guy, but cute. I'll sing the song in my- I am a grown up. Show. So it's ah, And it's, I think it's my favorite cover that I've heard of that song. Um, and I'm just so glad that now it's gonna be on the internet because it's in our show. So it's out there now, Danny. It's out there, it's I didn't out even know there. it wasn't on YouTube until you texted me that this morning. I had no clue. I've literally been looking for that video since that show. I was sitting there watching it, basically like checking, uh, like live. I was like, I need this in my life. Um, when you release your um, next uh, studio album, you can put it on the album. It's gonna be great. We're working on it. We're working I on can't, the ooh, album, for sure. More hot scoops here on Good Morning Tonight. <laughs> I won't play the breaking news thing because we don't have <laughs> another half hour. But um, Daniel, okay, wait, we need to, let's take it back. Let's let's take, let's take it back. Let's get deep into this interview. Let's get, you know, this is really hard hitting journalism, as you mm -hmm. know. I wanna know, did you ever break your legs doing Newsies? That show looks so hard. Okay, so I didn't break my leg doing Newsies, but a set piece did close on my hand and I <gasps> broke my the top of my hand and I was out of the show for like four weeks. So oh my God. I, I didn't get injured from the dancing, but I got injured from that giant ass steel set. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that is wild. This is it, Yeah, I was so bummed because I was about to go on for a full week as Davey, which was one of the covers that, uh, one of my covers uh, mm -hmm. that I had. I covered Davy and Crutchy, so I missed that. And then I was out for four weeks, but it was my senior year of college, so I got to finish all of my work in that four weeks for the rest of the year and then just like show up to class like a zombie for the rest of it. So, so smart. Also, did you try to talk the producers into changing Crutchy's ailment to a hand cast? <laughs> I was like, hey, I got this. And it looked like a dinosaur. Like it physically looked like, it was like a weird thing that I had to Velcro on and my hand was yeah. just stuck like this. It was so it sucked. I was so sad. I oh. walked to urgent care with like frozen peas and my like newsy hat and dirt on. Like I was like, oops, did like I looked like a mess on this. And they were like, who is this homeless man? <laughs> You're like, Oliver <laughs> Twist, are you are you okay? What's happening? I was like, please, sir, can I get an x-ray? Like <laughs> Can I get some Vicodin? My God. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. I'm well, I'm glad that your hand is healed and you are with us still to um you know, it's a Yas Queen as much as you <laughs> need to, which is very important in yes. these trying times, Daniel. Yes, it is. And not to be brought down by one injury from a high octane show, but you went on to become what I call a professional lost boy. You played a lost <laughs> boy in every production and every iteration of anything spinning off of Peter Pan, including yes. your most recent project, which I believe you're still there. Are you coming to us from the West Coast? I am coming, coming to you from La Jolla. California. From the Hoya Playhouse, Housing. where you were part of the originating cast of Fly. Yes. So it, they did it once in Dallas, and then they were doing a bunch of workshops, and then we got to do the show here. We opened, we had 27 previews, and then we had three shows after opening, and then Miss Rona decided to steal our uh, thunder. So, yeah, it, it was sad. You know, I don't feel cheated out of doing the show because we did 27 previews and got to open the thing. Like, we did it. Yeah. Like, but it's so sad. Like, the group of people was amazing the show and the music, everything is so good about it. Like, I really hope that it's gonna come back. And it's based on Peter Pan? Yeah, and it's from Wendy's point of view. So it's Ooh. it's a retelling of- Come on, ladies. Yes. And it's all about like female, female, female empowerment. And it's like yeah. really, re it's really cool. It's. I, I can't like give away too much just because of- Well, I think you've yeah. given away enough that it was obviously inspired by the reboot of Ghostbusters. So I, I'm- <laughs> That'll right be just now. between us. Um, but uh, I, I and uh, 
La Jolla Playhouse is also where Peter and the Star Catchers did their out of town. It did. It did. Yes. Ooh, they Battle Peter. of the Pan. They love My a Peter goodness. Pan musical, but so do I. Or be like, I clearly. <laughs> Honey, I'm not gonna lie. I've definitely met some uh, old gay men at Hillcrest. A lot of uh, a lot of Peter Pan syndrome there. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Jeff Cox with the hey. hot scoops. Not afraid. Hey. We're really Breaking we're really news. opening up to our audience. Uh, we're really opening up. How many episodes is this? This is what it took. Now we're here. We've this arrived. Is, well, one of the few uh, non-drag professional things I did was a production of Les Miserables in Vista, which is not very far from La Jolla. And uh, you played? I don't know, Barricade Bottom Number 5? Did you play someone? <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of your high school production. Of yeah, in high school, I played Mr. Tenardier. <laughs> yes! That is like one of my dream roles, honestly. Like, I, I can't wait to play that in the next revival. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Well, you and Jackie can be the, the happy couple. Right, it's it's true. And Where? Mrs. And okay, well, I, I'm gonna tell this story real quick because I was very proud of myself as a young 17 year old. So they had this like wig for me that was like pretty nice. I don't know, it looked kind of like this. Who knew? It had like a little like ponytail. And I was like, Snarty does not have hair this nice. And I literally dug out of some old nappy wig box, like not even a wig, but just like a scalp of hair, just like a top. <laughs> of frizzy, gross red hair. And I teased the F out of it and just like safety pinned it under Tenardier's stupid hat. The hair looked so gross. And I was like, yeah. this is Tenardier's hair. The kind of thing that now, <laughs> yeah, the kind of thing that now you just roll up and use as a bump it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Was the whole piece back then. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So that's, uh, you know, hey, we're doing drag from as, as young as we uh, want. I don't know. I don't know where that was going. Uh, I've, heard, I've heard it said that we're all born naked and the rest is drag. It's drag. True. How's that, this is, how's that for a cross reference? I, you know what? We are not sponsored by uh, VH1 World of Wonder or RuPaul's Drag Race, and we won't get sued by them, but we will say whatever the F we want because it's on my talk show. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Danny, of course, uh, I'm so excited that it uh, that today is the day that you joined us because it is our kickoff episode of Oztober. And so we we couldn't possibly let you go without talking a little bit about the Wicked play, uh, which you, yes, I, I think I saw you in that one as well. Yes. My gosh, I swear I'm not stalking you or anything. Uh, what is your what is your hot take? What's your favorite memory that you would share with us about your time in Wicked? Oh, oh my God. I, there's honestly so many. I feel like, well, getting the gig was like incredible because I like was so obsessed with Wicked growing up. My screening was tragically you and me both. two on AIM. Oh my I was, God. I was Dang. fully in college when Wicked came out. So cool. <laughs> and I remember turning to my mom when I saw it. I was like, I'm going to be in this. I thought I was going to be Fiero. Jokes. Now I want to be Alphaba. Duh. But Duh. Um, my favorite memory, I think, was just being able to do the show for so long. And like, I got to play... I got to play Bach, which was so cool. And I got to like meet so many people doing that show. And like the Wicked World just is so like everyone, you know, it's it, the whole family of Wicked is just super cool. But I think my favorite, favorite, favorite memory was probably we used to do um, these performances for like, there was something for autism week in theater yeah. and like, and they would keep the lights on half and it was just filled with children and their whole families and it was just so amazing and so inspiring and i'm a crybaby to begin with so i was just like sobbing the whole show i'm like i'm supposed to hate elphaba but i'm crying at her right now <laughs> and my last show jenny denoya did a fierce option up for me at the end of defying gravity and blew me a kiss and i was like okay i can die now oh, oh my god are you kidding what a time uh, what a time Truly. I'm like, my gay yeah. ass used to look at like the YouTube like riff contest, still do. But yeah. now I'm like, Mr. Mr. Go one. Lightly or whoever he is that posts all the like, who sang the Defying Gravity Bridge the best? I'm obsessed. Um, so you guys, if you don't follow Danny Quadrino, A, I don't know what you're doing, but B, there goes his handle. It's scrolling across the bottom of the screen. Give him a follow. Speaking of wicked memories, you may just find uh, some really iconic uh, posts. Just like give him a quick stalk. You also have my favorite backstage Wicked photo or video that's ever been taken, but I don't know that Bold we're dress? allowed to talk about it. Yes, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about it on the screen. It's fine, I don't care. Danny wore <laughs> a bubble dress, you guys. Danny wore- Live your life, girl. Zipped up, y'all. Come on, you're a skinny legend, Danny Quadrino. Danny, you need to do, you need to do like, um, cause you can sing all the parts. You need to just like do a one, a one man Wicked, one person Wicked. Michael, we're gonna talk about this. Jackie, thank you for the idea. We're gonna get it going. I'm very available to play Nessaro slash Morable. Thank you. 
booked, blessed. Here we go. We're ha- we're I, 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 I should, uh, we have to finish the episode because our guests are that good. But otherwise, I would be like, let's get out of here right now and get to work. <laughs> right. I'm so into this idea. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. We adore you. Um, we appreciate all of your talents. Thank you for sharing your vocal gifts with us. Uh, and we love you. Please come back anytime. And good morning tonight, darling. Cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank love you, you Danny. Ah, Danny Quadrino, you guys, or Daniel Quadrino, if he's in a professional mood. Uh, just and today, to- Michael, you're just Michael. No home. Just- oh, I forgot to change my name after the 5:30 quarantini. Oh, is that? And- oh, I didn't. Oh, look at this. I didn't. He has two different personas. It's, it's- like this. Which one's more fun, Michael with the exclamation point? Or a like, serious newscaster is Michael Hull. Yeah, I'll change it during the next uh, Breaking News 13-minute segment. Oh, cool. uh, <laughs> Michael with an exclamation point gets drunk on Thursdays with Broadway talent. Michael Hull uh, gets the hard-hitting news on Tuesdays. Mm, very hard-hitting news. Uh, and as a reminder, if you're having fun, hit subscribe. We are on YouTube. Um, and... Um, we also encourage you to make a donation uh, to Broadway for Biden by, visi- by visiting tinyurl.com slash bwaybiden or broadwayforbiden.com and uh, help support elect our uh, next commander in chief that will hopefully make things better for everyone in the Broadway community and beyond. Yes, work, work, work. All right. Well, speaking of the Broadway community and beyond. Speaking of hard hitting news and mm. of getting drunk on a Thursday, uh, wh- I think it's time for our special report, Jackie Cox. That's right, that's right. Today for our special report, we are joined by the creators and hosts of the hit podcast, Drama. Drama. In uh, drama, self-procla- self-proclaimed dramatics, Connor and Dylan McDowell explore theater, entertainment, pop culture, and the vibrance of love and life in New York City, catching up with incredible special guests along the way. They've got a very special announcement for us tonight, and we can't wait to see them. So with today's very special report, let's meet Connor and Dylan McDowell. <laughs> Hello, hello, good, good morning. morning tonight. I have a feeling you're saying good morning, but you are muted. This is oh, so yes. dramatic. You'll have how to unmute dramatic. yourself. Good We're thing Michael and I have no idea how to cover our talk. <laughs> We're saying good morning, saying. We're quoting Giselle Bryant from The Real Housewives of Potomac. Every time they're on a oh. trip, she says, good morning, saying, good morning, saying, good morning, saying. The queen. Well, Karen Huger's good the queen. Good morning, Um. What's up, guys? Darling, show us. What are these mugs, first of all? What are they? What do we have? What so mine have? is have? my favorite musical, Catch Me, Catch if, you me if You Can. It's starred Aaron Tveit and Norbert Leo Buck. Perfect. An incredible score by Shaman and Whitman. Justice for Catch Me If You Can. Ooh, okay. And mine is A from Pretty Little Liars. This is from the Warner Brothers studio in Los Angeles, California. It's my favorite TV show. It's got everything you could possibly need. And I it's filled with drama. No spoilers. I, d- I don't want to know who A is. Uh, I watched, I don't even think I still know. I finished the series, but I'm not sure I know who A was. It was like somebody, but somebody else. And there was a Same. twin under and they were buried and jumped off a bridge. Yeah. I don't know. Don't worry about it. Same. Um, boys, congratulations on your podcast. You know that I am a big fan. You know, I'm an avid listener. Mm, uh, thank you. And it's so nice to have you back on uh, one of our shows to tell us a little bit about your podcast. Let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. Mm. What's the pod? Mm. Oh my God. Well, drama started because Connor and I just love talking with each other. And, you know, we're twins. The media is swamped with twins. You know, you got Zach and Cody, you've got uh, Tia and Tamara and Mary Kay Mm. and Ashley. And we felt like all of their time Mm -hmm. had passed and it was time Mm -hmm. for a new twindom to reign again. And um, so was born drama. And we're actually coming up on our one year anniversary a month from today. It'll be November 6th that we launched our first episode. And basically it's casual conversations as Jackie introduced as being about entertainment, theater, pop culture, love and life in New York City. Um, And we have incredible guests who are on stage and off stage. Tomorrow our special guest is actually Ms. Cox, if you're not. That's right. Um, It's me, it's me. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I love all the wicked references tonight. Oh my god! I know we did pink goes good with green, so we had to do uh, our own wicked play. I see, oh, good I'm Belinda. I see a good witch <laughs> and a bad witch, but which witch is which? We don't know. Ooh. Ooh. 
Oh my God. And yes, and we've we've come tonight with a very special announcement related right. to our podcast. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that I'm on it tomorrow. Is that the announcement? That's one of them. That was the first one. Okay, because, good. Yeah, and, well, because in addition to talking about theater, we, we kind of use it, we use drama to talk to people who like theater, but that's kind of our springboard. We basically just talk about pop culture, world events, news, everything. I think with Jackie, we talk mostly about housewives. We talk a lot about track. housewives. It's so fun. Yeah. <laughs> so fun, but it's for everyone and it's great. But we have something very fun happening. As Dylan mentioned, our one year anniversary is a month from today. So that's coming. But the long asked for and awaited bonus content is coming. We're launching a Patreon this Friday. I know. Which is basically going to be a, you know, a, a, a platform where our listeners can get even more drama every month. They'll get, you know, maybe two to four episodes a month where we talk about you know, pop culture, we do deep dives into live musicals, filmed musicals, reality yeah, shows. TV, round Are you going to have the video of our podcast on there? Well, you did give us the blessing to do whatever we want with it. So I that did. was actually I an did. idea we had, Jackie. You can totally <laughs> do that. And uh, for those who want to subscribe, we did it, the three of us, entirely in the nude. So yes. <laughs> I, had I, tasteful, I had tasteful um, tassels on, but yes, oh, sorry, excuse it. me. And I had yeah, my yeah. earrings, so not yes. entirely, not entirely. <laughs> well, you've piqued my interest. Where can I listen slash watch slash uh, subscribe to your Patreon? Yes. So it's all going to be on our social media. That's the best place to follow us. It's at the drama podcast because we're the only one. <laughs> and here comes, um, here rolling across the bottom screen. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Oh, that's there it is. And you can follow us. Um, and it's also anywhere you find your podcast. So it's going to be on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Apparently, we have a lot of listeners um, in South America who listen on Stitcher. It's it's everywhere podcasts are found. Amazing. Amazing. I can't wait to listen to this episode and subscribe to your Patreon and uh, look at all that exclusive content. Yes. Well, and we have so. a really, really exciting one year anniversary episode coming out in one month. It's going to feature a major guest. So you need to subscribe to be ready for it. Is it Jackie Cox again? I Like I said, you have to be subscribed to find out. <laughs> I don't think I made your Michael. I wasn't even, I wasn't even the news. I wasn't Jackie even, Cox. I was, I was, I wasn't even above the fold. That's, Jackie, a, that's an old major to me. Does anyone even know Newsies what above reference. the fold means? Above the well, fold. I, I saw Newsies. They talk about that on Newsies. Yeah, yeah Danny yeah. Cardino knows what above the fold yeah, means. Above <laughs> the fold. Yeah, we'll bring Danny back for a consultation on this. But uh, yeah, above the fold is when uh, the news was so good that it was on the top half of the newspaper, not yeah. the bottom. Yeah, Pulitzer and Erst ain't got us. Roxy Rock Chicago. Uh, what else is above the fold? Big news. Big news above the fold. Yeah, yeah. Marty McFly, teen arrested. That was above the fold in Back to the it Future. It was. Listen, you two are doing a phenomenal show here. Every Everyone who tunes in just loves both of you. It's why your listenership continues to grow. Connor and I adore you. Keep doing what you're doing and delivering the breaking news from Broadway and beyond, seriously. News. Well, we adore you boys back. Uh, you know, we're big fans of you and your podcast here. Uh, and I can't, I can't wait to listen to the drama slash Jackie Cox crossover episode tomorrow. I can't wait. Tomorrow. Thanks for having Thanks, us on. Guys. Guys. We adore you. Good morning Cheers. tonight. Cheers. Cheers. Oh uh, my goodness, drama. Ooh, I, the I, hits, the hits keep coming, Michael. Uh, and speaking of hits, um, I think it's time to um, kick Oztoberfest into high gear with our next guest. What do you say, Michael? I I have been looking forward to this all day, you guys. I am so excited. Uh, we're kicking off Oztoberfest in a big, big way. She mm -hmm. is honored as Broadway's longest running Elphaba. Uh, she also played Elphaba on the national tour, where her performances her performance was nominated for an Irene Award. Yes, our next guest also headlined the national tour, one of my favorite musicals, If Slash Then, playing yeah, the iconic. Now I'm Michael, and now I'm someone else. I know. Oh I'm yes, 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 playing the iconic dual role of Liz Slash Beth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, in addition to If Then on Broadway, she also starred in the Tony-winning uh, revival of Hair. And uh, she also appeared off-Broadway in Rock of Ages and Unlocked. And has appeared regionally in Paper Mill, PCLO, Casa CRT, and on film in Set It Up. You guys, her voice is bananas. She is an iconic no good deed. We don't support bootlegs here, but go look it up. And recently, now you can get her in your very own living room as part of the new uh, A Killer Party, oh, oh, a musical created entirely during quarantine. She's here to tell us all about it. We are so delighted to welcome to Oztoberfest, the incredible 
Jackie Burns. Jackie Burns! Good morning tonight! Oh my god, wait, what? what is your mug? It says slut. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, yep. No, it's it's um Salt Lake, Utah. Perfect, perfect. Like, get your mind out of the gutter. I, well, you know, I'm a simple girl. I'm a simple <laughs> girl. <laughs> Jackie Burns, good morning tonight. Welcome to the show. We are so excited to have you. Thank you for coming to spend some time with us tonight. We are just, we couldn't imagine a cooler way to kick off Oztoberfest. Oh my God, thank you so much. I'm so excited. Um, after soundcheck, I said, I have to put on a bobble because Jack Fox is killing me with that bobble. It was so I don't have anything as fierce as her, but I was like, let me let me find something. You know what? People people think that you know big statement jewelry for drag queens is because you know we're larger than life. No, it's to distract from our manly feature. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. Oh my gosh. You are stunning and gorgeous. Um, so wait, let's okay, let's kick into this. Let's let's really dive into this Oztoberfest here because mm -hmm. because you know you are honored as being the the, the longest running alphaba on Broadway. Is this is this the accurate statement? It's true. This is the accurate statement. And you you also went back more than once. Like that, like you decided to like, I'm gonna go back in that chroma keg, zip on that <laughs> green bodysuit. And uh, uh, wait and do a full glam makeover during like my 10 minute break and intermission and still yeah. come out swinging. Like you did that. Yeah, I was <laughs> like a glutton for punishment. No, I, I won't I won't lie to you. That was one of the reasons when they when my manager called me, she texted me and I was in a bookstore in the self-help section. And I, <laughs> it was like, there was like three months where I was like, I could not get arrested. Like I hadn't had an audition in forever. And it was funny. I went and saw Sunny in the Park with George with my friend Drew mm -hmm. Wicks, a, a fellow alphabet as well. Mm -hmm. And we, we were like, oh my God, I, I mean, like, I can't get arrested. This is brutal. <laughs> like, what? And we both were like, what is that? What is happening? And then all of a sudden my manager texted me. He was like, call me ASAP Broadway offer. And I'm like, what Broadway offer? I haven't even had an audition in three months. You know what I mean? And I call her and I'm like, what? And they're like, okay, Wicked wants you to come back. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and so I was thinking like like a tweener because sometimes they bring girls back for like three months or two months if like they have another alphaba, but she's like not ready. Like she's right. busy or something. So they'll bring an older alphaba back, you know? So I was thinking that and I was like, oh, okay, for how long? They're like, for a year. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was you, like, oh, you what? Take that year. Take that year. You are not a tweener. You are not a between alphabas alphabet. I have to tell you, you are my boyfriend's favorite alphabet. I'm also sporting you guys before I reveal this. Just know the shirt is a year plus old, uh, and I love all alphabas. But I do want to point out, I'm wearing my my alphabet shirt. These are my girls. Uh, but you are. You're my boyfriend Christopher's favorite alphabet, and we came to see you in your last run. And girl, you. Uh, Somehow you just keep getting better. It was mind blowing. Uh, we had the best time. You are such a super talent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it was. But I that I did cry because I was like, oh god, I don't know if I can be green again. No, you can. You can do it. You can do it for me. Just super fans. Wait, hold on. I'm grabbing something real quick to show you. Oh, I'm so excited. But I love yeah the green and the green zits. I was like, I don't know yeah. if I can handle it. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we have a lot of Wicked to talk about today, but I also want to talk about, this is surprisingly not that weird for me to have you right here in my living room because you've been in my living room much of quarantine uh, for this new killer party musical, well, uh, yeah. which first of all, it's a very cool musical. If you guys don't know what this is, uh, we have a little slide here. Hold on. Where is it? So here it is, a killer uh, murder mystery musical, a killer party. Oh, uh, it's super fun. You guys, it's stars. It's you, Laura Osnes, Jared Spector, uh, Alex Newell, uh, uh, um, Jeremy Lang. Yeah. Oh my Jeremy God. Jordan. It, the list goes on and on. And you guys all did this from home during quarantine, and it's unbelievable the way that the shots line up and it looks like you're talking to each other, but you're secretly all at home. Yeah. Uh, and then you, Miss Jackie Burns, really stepped it up with the use of what, a boat, a drone, uh, extra vocals, like production value. And like a wig. Oh wait, yeah, wait. Oh my God. Actually, I, I love it. 
I almost, I almost wore her tonight in honor, just like, you know, to yeah. be. Yeah, a little but... more drag, a little more drag. I was trying to figure out how to get, this is what I went and grabbed, my wicked, my wicked, uh, my wicked little guy here, because I'm going to have you sign as Jackie whenever I, whenever you're back in the city, if you're not here now. Um, I was trying to figure out how to like have this, but I have no table because I have a green screen. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. I'm in a real live studio and there's real no table studio. for me to plant this. I wanted this sitting here next to me during this show, but I have nowhere to put it. There's no oh, table here. That. that is so beautiful. You it's... can find my wig. <gasps> oh my God, perf. This is, oh, look at this. So we're all fun. just going to fangirl <laughs> over each other and that's how we're going to do it and that's how we're going to live. Speaking of fangirl, I have to talk to you about If Then, which mm. I think... If Then is one of those shows where like either people were like, okay, it was cute. Or people are like obsessed with it. I was obsessed with it. I saw it twice. I like rethought my entire life every time I watched it. And I'd be like, what if I'd done that? What if I dated that person? What if I'd become a dentist? Like I never knew those things about myself. <laughs> but luckily in this musical, I was able to do this. Now we had another guest who was in that show as well. But I want to ask you. Because okay. it seems like a very complicated show. Like how much pushing and pulling and throwing of the glasses on your face and then throwing on a cardigan. And like, was you, were you just constantly being like harangued by like costume people as you like ducked behind a door? Like how did that all work? Oh my God. Yes. It was crazy. You know, what was really crazy. There were so many flipping costume changes, but my favorite part is, is that the, um, we would like, I would come off stage and like, take off my jeans to put on another jeans that looked exactly the same. And I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, they were fierce jeans, but like they were all fierce jeans. But I like, I literally think I had like six pairs of jeans that were all like a basic variation on themselves. And I was like, no one can notice that this one has like a little more stitching on the booty like than the other one. I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was one pair of pants the whole show. <laughs> Literally every time I'd come up, I'd be like, and they're all skin tight. That was another thing. Like the costume designer and I, she, I, she's amazing, but she refused that I was bigger than I was. She was like, no, you're a size like 27 inch waist and I'm a 28. First she said 26. And I was like, no, 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 I'm a 28. I got some hips. I know I look small, but I'm, I'm, I, I promise you. She was like, no, no. And she kept trying to get me in these 26. And I was like, I can't breathe. <laughs> You're like, I have to belt. <laughs> yeah, like I can't. And finally, like we, she was like, all right, the 27s. And I was like, oh my God, so fine, whatever. And like, they were so skin tight and like ripping those off to then put up more. You know what I mean? It was like that hop and like the, on your bed with the coat hanger. And like, <laughs> oh my God, it was like, brutal. I, I'm I don't even, I can't even imagine that happening because you're off stage for like three minutes in that yeah. show. Like you're like never off stage because you're the main character in both storylines. Oh, oh my God, that was the other funny thing auditioning for it like that nobody knows about is that we didn't get the script, right? So when I, I had just finished playing Alpha on Broadway the first time and David Stone, who's the producer of both, was like, hey, I, I, I want you to come in to audition for Adina Standby in this new show with then. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll let me think about, you know, I was like, I'm not sure, maybe, you know, I don't know, because I'm crazy. And so <laughs> I was like, okay. And so I get the sides and I think I'm auditioning for a part named Elizabeth, right? And all you got were the sides, like three sides, not the script. And the sides are all Liz Beth, Liz Beth. And I was like, so I had to call my agent. I was like, wait, um, I thought I was auditioning for this part called, I thought it, her name was Elizabeth, but I only got sides for Liz and Beth. So like, wh is, is she Liz or is she Beth? I don't. And the answer was yes. Yes. No, exactly. They're, yes. And I was like, yes, what? Because <laughs> they didn't even know. They're like, uh, because it, the, the script was hush hush. So I didn't know it was like that, you know, like parallel like world. So I just was yeah. like, so confusing. So As opposed confusing. to when I went into audition, they said, no, thank you. And goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, but okay, so, or it could have been, you know, this is me, I'm like, what would I do? I'd be like, maybe she's like, her parents were really new age, or maybe she was new age, and she was like, I'm gonna be a slash name, like, my name is Jazz slash Key, Jack Ooh. Key, like, Ooh. Elizabeth, like, maybe, maybe that's what, uh, that's, that's like one place my mind would have gone, and then that's also probably why I wouldn't have gotten that call back, so, no, good I thing you didn't fall down that rabbit hole. <laughs> I just went in completely confused, like this. Uh, uh. Well, you did something right. Yeah, thank God. You know. <laughs> but 
And what was it like doing that national tour? Because I think it's interesting, you know, we we here in the Broadway community really were excited to celebrate a brand new musical that had no source material that was not based on a movie or a book or like a story that everyone knows. It was brand new. What was it like taking that on the road? Because, you know, no offense to the road, but I feel like the road is uh, more suited to, you know, Mamma Mia. You know, you got the ABBA tie-in, like those kinds of things. What was it like? How did the audience Not react Mama, yeah. on the road? But like, what well, were some what were some reactions you heard from the from the children and the folks who came to see it? You know, it's so funny because I had the exact. I, I I really honestly, like you said earlier, where you were being quite kind, where you're like, either people are like, eh, or they like really loved it. No, either people hated it, <laughs> or they loved it. You know what I, I mean? Loved it. it. Was it was one or the other. It was never like it was never like. Like, oh, yeah. yeah, nobody's like, oh yeah, like it was like, oh my god, what was that? You know, what you're mean? like sobbing at the end, or you're like, goodbye. <laughs> exactly. I just remember there was one time, especially because I standing by on Broadway, I you know could watch the show a lot, and I remember in the beginning of previews, there was I was standing in the back behind a bunch of women, and it was a group of like six women, all obviously out, you know together it was really cute and there it was right after the song called what the fuck and when um josh the boyfriend comes you know pops out and and literally the lady goes oh come on what is wrong? are they trying to fuck with us like what is I don't know, <laughs> it's so flipping confusing like she was so viscerally mad oh so, my god so mad so like when david the producer was like hey i want you to go do the tour like you're gonna replace adina like this whole thing i was like Oh God, I was like, if people in New York were getting it, I was like, I don't like, ooh, what a, you know, who knows? But actually it was so well received. It got news. Everybody was standing and sobbing every, I mean, it was like kind of magical. And yeah. I, I didn't think it would be like that just because it is a confusing musical. I think it's genius. It's so good. You know what? I, I, I'm A, so happy to hear that. B, uh, I feel like, I wonder if people who don't live in New York, where I feel like everyone's like, this is my life. I didn't, I, these are the choices I made. I wonder if people who live in other cities were like, <laughs> you know, I have thought about what I would have done if I yeah. didn't become a school teacher in Des Moines. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That yeah. was another if then for me. Um, but yes, huge fan of if then, huge fan of yours. Um, Jackie, I have a surprise for you because in addition to me and Michael being big fans, when I told, um, well, when I posted about uh, you being our first Elphaba for Oztoberfest month, I had another big fan of yours reach out to me and ask if they could um, say hello and surprise you. I believe you guys have interacted on social media but have never met before. I'm gonna bring this big fan in. Um, their name is Big Jackie Fan, um, and they're Hello. very excited. Oh, um, it's like the Masked Singer. Who's yeah, the oh, yeah. Masked Who's it going to be? Um, uh, Big Jackie Fan. Um, let's see if you can give um, Jackie Burns some clues as to who you are. <clears throat> All right. Um, well, I'm the biggest Alphaba Wicked fan in the world. <laughs> um, we're upset. I'm obsessed with you. Um, what else? What else? Uh, I might be in a show on Broadway, but I'm not really in the show, but I kind of am, but not really me, but someone else that is me is in the show. Oh, okay. Here's another, here's another clue. I will say, um, two days ago was your special holiday. It was a very big day for us. Yeah. It was a big day for mm -hmm. you. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, the last clue I'll give is that it, you know, you may not be connected to the spooky month of October through Wicked, but you are connected through the month of October with your amazing uh, cooking program. Which yeah, you we hope. might have a cooking show. I on think the Google audience. Is, I think the audience is starting to catch on. Uh, big <laughs> Jackie fan, would you tell us two days ago what day was it? It was October third. Yay! Yeah! We have a I'm You guys, we promised a prize with this one. Jump it and it. That's how I feel. Like you, it's there's nothing more fun than when two people fangirl out over each other because I, I'm fangirling over you. I'm gonna take a picture of this. <laughs> take a picture of it. Hi. 
Don't worry, Jackie. This lives on YouTube in perpetuity. This we'll, ever. we'll do it. We'll, we'll do it forever. Jonathan Bennett, good morning tonight. Welcome good to morning the show. Good morning tonight, Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Cheers. Hi, Jackie. Cheers. Look at you. I'm like literally dead. Am I breaking down hives yet? When I get really nervous, I break down hives. Wait. <laughs> tell you okay, that. go ahead. Tell me, and then I'll tell you my story. Go. Okay, the first time that you DM'd or whatever, like over social media, I mean, yeah. I died and my company manager, Tyler uh, at Wicked, the assistant company manager, was like doing my Instagram for me because he told me I was a tragic hot mess and I needed to up my game and I did. But so. your Instagram is so good. Like Not when I started following you, it was because it was so good. And I'm like, secretly, I was like, I'm also getting like a backstage look at Wicked every night because she's always mm. posting stories and she likes to eat these things and she likes this. And I'm like <laughs> fangirling the whole time, go on. So yes, well, that's the only reason I was good is because of him. Cause he was like, it's time for you to up your game. Like, let's do this. And I was like, okay, fine. But you DM me and I died. And I immediately like called him into my dressing room and I was like, are you ready for this? <laughs> and we just literally had the biggest kiki in my dressing room. We were like, I didn't know what to write back. I was like, should I write back? Should I, should I wait a minute? Like, should I wait? Should I, I don't look too moody. Are we dating? Are we? I think we're dating. I think now it's official. I think, I think, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, you know, <laughs> okay, October 3rd was thing. for yeah. Aaron and Katie. And then October, now, what is this? Sixth is for uh, Jonathan and Jackie. Jonathan and Jackie. Okay. But there's the thing, cause I was fangirling over you because side note, out of Oz is my, like the out of Oz series with you and Casey Cott is my all time. Number one. If you look at my history of YouTube, my I, number one watched YouTube video. I can't. No, because I have a weird thing. Like I'm a weird creature of habit. So, but we'll talk about hives in a minute with Eden Espinosa when I broke out into hives. Cause anytime I meet one of the alpha buzz in person, I break out into hives and I have, it's Real a same. whole situation. I'm not even kidding. Like I had hives. Well, okay, let me go back to this story. So <laughs> when I look, I'm not, I can't stop talking. So when I saw <laughs> wicked and I, I've seen wicked 19 times. And when I saw it in, when I saw it at the Pantages, it was with Eden. And we go backstage because a friend of ours was in the show and was like, can I go backstage? And they're like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can go backstage. I'm like, who do we know? How do we? And we make it happen and we go back and I meet Eden Espinosa and I look at her and I'm like, I can't speak to you. And then I start breaking out in hives and my friend Ali is like, we gotta go. Like, we gotta get you out of here. And I had to like leave because I couldn't handle it. And like with you, it's the same thing. Like when you started talking to me, I'm running around the house. I'm like, babe, 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 Jackie Burns is talking, Jackie Burns is talking to me on DM. And he's like, yeah, babe, I get it. I'm like, no, no, I said she's alphabet. <laughs> and it was and it was like current alphabet too, which was even bigger. I was like, oh my God, it's happening right yeah. now. She's backstage. And then I would look at the times. I'm like, you know what time it is? Jackie Burns is at half hour, just so you know. And he's like, babe, you gotta calm down. I'm like, I can't. And then I would message, I messaged you once and it was like in between half hour and places. And I was like, oh my God, I probably totally screwed up with the process. Cause she's like probably getting ready and like doing the whole thing. But when I do, when I do, um, uh, Cake Wars or any of the wars or any movie, I watch you and Casey Cotts out of Oz along with every Aaron Tomate video too, but that's a whole nother story. But um, I watch- I love, Jonathan, video. we need to have you as a commentator on this show regularly. <laughs> so good. And I watch it because it like gets me into like this like calm, happy mood. And it like, you know what I mean? Like when you, as an artist, you create stuff and you put it out there like that video. Well, that video has now become my process when I'm getting ready to play any character or host anything, it's in my list of things that I put on on my speakers in my dressing room when I just want to be in a good mood and be excited to like be a performer and be excited to be an actor and go out and do something that's going to, you know, tell a story to all these people. I need something that's going to fuel me. So your video fuels me. So I had to tell you that. It's, Wait, question, it's literally. Question, question for you, Jonathan. So, um, a, that's amazing. And B, are you telling me that you played uh, Jackie Burns's video before preparing for your Let's go ahead and talk about it because I was just you go ahead. Talk about a segue. First, very first, this is very exciting to me. I posted this on my Instagram because I was so excited the minute mm -hmm. I heard it. Jonathan Bennett will be playing the first main gay storyline in a Hallmark Christmas movie. And you just finished filming. This we is so did. huge. And this I'm so excited. Or when you were in uh, Victoria. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked. Yes. yes. I didn't know why. That's why. Yeah, oh, that's what I couldn't talk about. So we we wrapped it. It's done. And it comes out October, uh, November 22nd. And we're so excited because it's the first, you know, male on male uh, storyline in a, in a Hallmark movie ever. And so it's going to make, it's just going to be so fun and everyone's going to love it. 
and it's going to be so amazing. But 100%, you can even ask. I, we'll get the guy that plays my husband in it, Brad uh, Ar Archek. He, oh my gosh, there's a big plane going by. Wow, there's like an army plane. Sorry. <laughs> Brad Harchek, when during lunch, he would come into my trailer and we would have lunch together and we would watch YouTube videos. We'd watch Drag Race and Broadway and he would pull up Drag Race videos and I would pull up Broadway videos and yours is one of them because I go, look, how, I also think it's very cool how Casey caught sings out of the side of his mouth. I think it's like, it's the most like mesmerizing thing in the world when he's like, would it be all right by you? Would it be all right by you? Like he's like oh. doing. Don't Chelsea, worry, Jonathan. I, I smell a Fiero yeah, coming Chelsea, on. Chelsea, Chelsea is watching. We're gonna send this to Chelsea. Fiero. Why have you I, not been Fiero? Because I want to be fucking Alphaba. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's like Casey Cott. I can watch sing crooked out of his mouth. I can watch Aaron Jvate sing with his pouty lip all day and like not try. But what I love about you when you perform, and I have to ask you this, Jackie Cox, do you try or does it just happen? Because when you're on stage, it looks like, what I love about watching you on stage in every video that I've ever seen of you, um, is that it's never, we're never worried as an audience if she's ever gonna hit it. Mm, I definitely see that. I see that with Jackie. We're never time. worried. It's mm -hmm. just gonna happen and it's gonna be perfect so we can just sit back. Cause you know, there's some moments in Wicked when you're like, eh, here it comes. And with you, we're like, no, yeah, she's fine. It's gonna be great. And it is great. Um, and because you're the only person that can go from going like sing, 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 and then um, I'd be so, cause you you have this like quirkiness to Alphaba that no one else does. It's kind of like a playful and you don't take it, same thing on your Instagram. You don't take it as serious in the, in the ideas of a character. She has a lightness, I'm, I'm saying the wrong things, but there's a lightness to her when you're playing her where it makes us as an audience feel lighter with the character, right? Like when you say, um, I'd be so happy, I, I got out. Like <laughs> no one does that. You know what I mean? Because like I'm you had this like fun that no one else has with it. Thank you. Oh my gosh, Jonathan, you are the sweetest. I can sweetest. talk Broadway all day. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> no, Jonathan Bennett was a dramaturg of the Broadway choices. I'm obsessed. How can you look like look like that and also be like that adorable? Screw you. Um, this is filler. Um <laughs> Can I have your doctor's name, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fine. It's all right. Um, I love you so much. I have to go. I wanted to say hello. We're out of here. Stay in touch. And I love you so much. I'm your biggest fan. I'm your biggest fan. This is so ah, Okay. Call me every five, okay? okay. Jonathan, we love you. Oh, Jonathan Bennett, everyone. Surprise. You we guys. told you there would be surprises this month. And uh, we're just getting started. So I can't surprises. believe he... he Literally, Jackie and I were here yesterday working on our closing number, which is coming up in just a few minutes. Uh, and he called and he was like, oh, my God, you have Jackie Burns on your show. And Jackie Cox was like, yeah. And he was like, I'm obsessed with her. Um, and so we're just so excited to uh, to have both of you, I guess. Jackie, I thank you. You were, you, were, you were literally the cutest. And I love that that moment of you seeing him is going to live on YouTube forever. It's going to be incredible. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on the show, Jackie. Thank and you. tell tell the kids um, once more where they can find you on the Instagrams because you have a cute, very similar Instagram handle to mine. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. at Jackie Burns NYC. Here it comes oh right God. around. I was about to look it up because <laughs> I never remember. It's yeah. So it's it's it, just remember it's the same as Jackie Cox's. That'll help. Just tell people that. Yeah, that'll definitely help. That'll help. That'll that'll, that'll help. I'm gonna tell everybody, I, I'm not gonna lie to you in my mind because I think you've made it when a drag queen has your name. And I know you're not named after me, but in my in my world, you are, and I've made it. I think, I think, um, I. you know what? We can just rewrite history. I'm named after you. Let's just make it Thank official. You. I think I for Oztoberfest, I would- for Oztoberfest. Magic, magic is happening and on Oztoberfest. On Oztoberfest. Jackie, what, are there any upcoming things that the kids should know about that we, but, um, before we, before we get into the, the closing of this year program? Uh, no, I feel like literally I just died and went to heaven. To <laughs> for this month of October, you're named after me. So like, check it, I've made it. And then I met like the sexiest man alive that I've had a crush on since forever. And so I'm good and I'm just going to go die. So Great. I've 
Left. Jackie, we love you. Daniel, we love you. Like Connor and Dylan, cheers. we love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. What an exciting show we had here at Good Morning Tonight. Um, if again, if you if you liked the show, please um follow all of these gorgeous people. Am I pointing the right way? Yes, all these gorgeous people <laughs> on their social medias. Um, and if you enjoyed the show and you care about this country um, and you were thinking, you know, oh, I wish I could tip Jackie and Michael, you can by donating to Broadway for Biden. Just yeah. go to tinyurl.com slash Biden and help um, elect uh, the next president. Um, all donations will go directly to the Biden Victory Fund. My darlings, thank you so much. Um, Dylan and Connor, um, once again, remind the folks the name of your podcast tell the kids yes it is at the drama podcast on all social media platforms and we just got to say we had jackie on she was one of our first guests last winter this jackie and then this jackie burns you've had both jackie's on we have had both jackie's on and jackie burns's episode is one of our most popular episodes of all time yeah. and well, even with the audio issue that we had and tomorrow's episode with jackie cox is going to do just as well. And backstage, we were talking to Danny Quad. He's coming on the pod. Yes, so, look at this. <laughs> Dreams happening. I can't, Jackie oh Burns God. just won a role in the next Jonathan Bennett movie. I'm, all of these things are happening. And we may have cast Jonathan Bennett in Wicked. I, I Jackie, that. Jackie, if he gets Fiero, Jackie Burns, will you go back? Yes. I know I told Can you I that you're, I, I know I told you you're not an interstitial alphaba, but even if you would just go back for like a week, just yeah. do just do it with him, please. I need to see that as long as you're mine. I oh would. God, me too. Wait, I need to put him in the just pan. Do it, just do it yeah. for something. Well, the Gershwin's open. I got the key. It's a couple yeah. blocks from here. It'll be great. Yeah. Um, Daniel Quadrino, I'm obsessed with this backdrop. Please return uh, to New York when you are ready. We miss you here uh, and we adore you. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us on Good Morning Tonight. Cheers to all of you. We, I, This has been such a fabulous, fun kickoff to Oztoberfest. Um, and we love all of you. So Cheers, thank you guys. You. Thank you all for being here tonight. Mwah. Good morning tonight. You guys, if you're having fun, uh, please do hit subscribe on this channel that you're watching. There are three shows that happen here. Uh, Jackie Cox and I are live every Tuesday night with uh, Good Morning Tonight. And we are in the middle of Oztober. We have three at least. Aha, we have at least three more iconic alphabas coming your way, but you never know who may fly by. Uh, and then on Thursdays, it's the 5.30 Quarantini. That's me again and my buddy Dylan Bustamante. Our guests this Thursday are Josh Lehman and Bobby Conti Thornton. You can check us out on Thursday at 5.30. Yes, and then on uh, Mondays, it's back to MT Trivia with uh, with the Medskirt Timsonses, where you can, um, you can play against some of Broadway's best and see if you have what it takes to be uh, the queen of Broadway trivia. Um, really nerdy. And that's everything that's happening here at Broadway Talk Live. Now, before we share our parting words with you all <laughs> on this very momentous kickoff to Oztoberfest, uh, I must say that, um, you know, Michael and I, we, we, you know, we try these parting words. We do them every week. And um, after last week's, uh, we did watch the debate and um, we had a lot of feelings. I think, I think that's how I would describe it, Michael. Yeah, we sure did. Guys, we love you all. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Did that really just happen? Trump's an idiot, there's no doubt. Our so-called president loves an argument. He's a tyrant that shouts. He'll ruin the whole country. He has no clout. Let's vote him out. Vote for Biden and Kamala, yes, Queen. And then I stand with Biden, what I've waited for since, well, 2016. And with all his Biden wisdom, he will tell us plain and candid, because Biden isn't dumb, or like Donald, so small-handed. No, he asks, will you care for democracy? You bet we do. That's no lie. So that's how we will vote. Joe Biden and I. Once we have Joe Biden, our country will change. 
And if you don't love Biden, remember Donald Trump's deranged. He spreads untruths and COVID too. Our allies are ashamed. And he uses racist dog whistles too. By white supremacists, he's acclaimed. His whole term's been a curse, so full of lies. We'll make a change, you know. Joe Biden and I. And one day he'll say to me, Jackie Cox, aren't you glad that you voted blue? Shouldn't a queen who's so good inside have a president that cares for you? And thank goodness then Donald Trump will be no more than a distant memory. Democracy will be preserved. We'll get the leadership we deserve. Of course, that's real important to me. Thank friggin' God I'll reply. What up here will be Joe Biden and I? Yes, what up here will be Joe Biden and I? Michael, democracy is for everyone. Unlimited. Our power is unlimited. And I just had a vision almost like a prophecy. I know it sounds truly crazy. And true, the vision's hazy. But I swear someday there'll be a president that's smarter than man, woman, person, camera. TV high esteem when people see him they will scream the u.s's favorite team joe biden